Hello, friends, and welcome back to another episode. So uh, I'm getting back into 110 now. I was I was shooting 110 in the 1970s, and I, I loved it. It was simple. It was fun. And now I'm starting to rediscover 110. So I'll show you here. This was kind of a top-end model for Kodak back in the day. 1980, I believe, was the year. Uh, 110 started getting popular in the, like 72. It was developed in 72. And by the time this camera came out, it was 1980. And they had released many iterations between 72 and 80. So they got to, they got to form to pretty much to a state where it was this was a high-end camera because they had eight years to figure it out. So this was after eight years of evolution, okay? So we have the Kodak <coughs> Extralight 500 camera outfit. And look how high-speed this is. Sensor light flash. Woo! The electronic flash that turns itself on and off when needed. Now we're cooking with gas. Okay, so excuse me while we go out of focus here for a while. I'll bring things in and out of focus. So I'm not going to use this, of course, right? Because this is this is uh, the original film pack, and I don't want to destroy the collectability of it. Okay, so I, I'm not. And it's it's new. The, the 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 it's the film is still in there. Rich, the original film, 30 years old, over 30 years old. So this is the battery it takes. It's a 9 volt battery. You can get any 9 volt, you know, like a local supermarket or retail store. And the good thing about this is some of the Kodaks took a K battery. K is in that word king, right? And you don't want to use that those K batteries are not made anymore. So do your research, whatever camera you buy, and try to stay away from the K battery because it's not made anymore. And they recommend a hack. There's a hack. But it's a pain in the rear, and you don't want to go there. It's so easy to avoid a K battery camera. Just avoid it altogether, okay? And stay with it. It's either most of the cameras are either nine volt or two double A. So just stay with the nine volt or two double A battery cameras. So here's the 500. The way you open it is this little clip here is under tension. Let me get in focus here. So you see, it's there's a little spring in there, and you just press the spring, and then you open this, and it becomes the handle for the camera okay so now this you actually take your images and you, you can brace the camera with this hand and you're bracing it with this hand as, as you're touching the shutter release okay so I'll push the button here to show you what happens okay now it's flashing red it means it's not ready and then it went green so it started flashing green flashing red means the camera's not ready the flash is not ready flashing green means it it's the, the light meter is reading the scene and it's saying the flash needs to fire and it's ready. If it was a steady green, you get steady green when you're outside. And that means you don't need flash and the camera's ready to go, okay? Uh, now this is different too. Normally the button was up here. This the, the, On the earlier models, the hinge was here at the bottom and the door would open like this with the hinge here. In this model, the hinge is on the right side. So you open this and right and then now that your film door opens up and you can see this is where the film goes and I'll open it here in just a second but I just want to show you around the camera first so again we see what you know the different lights and what they do this was for the initials where people would put their three initials this is the top of the camera right and you can see here Kodak Electrolyte 500 camera shutter release this is the battery door 9 volt battery and it says right here there's a warning sign. Okay, made in USA. Let me get my focus. And it says right here, warning, high voltage, do not disassemble. There's like a little capacitor in there. It draws power from the battery, stores in the capacitor to fire the charge. So it's saying you can get shocked if you mess around and open this camera. You're going to get zapped from the capacitor. Okay, so let's show you around the front of the camera. This is the flash, of course. Kodak icon logo light the light meter uh this says kodak lens real mar lens 22 millimeter this is actually a very high-end lens it's made by uh, schneider like some of the on the roly flex right they, they came with two cameras either the zeiss or the schneider and this is a schneider cruise knock 22 millimeter real mar lens this is the now this is what you got to be careful about too because when I first got the camera, I thought the glass element had fallen out. I actually thought the lens had fallen out of the camera. Now, I was just about to email the seller and say, hey, look, I want a refund. But I said, well, let me, let me look first. I said, maybe this is the way it's supposed to look. And it is. Actually, I was shocked because almost all your 110 cameras, the, the glass lens is exposed on the outside. But this is protected by the shutter. The, actual, the shutter, the lens is behind the shutter. 
and this is protecting the glass element. So it looks broken. If you can look in there, it actually looks broken. It's like there's a piece chipped off or something, but it's not. It's actually, that's the way it's supposed to look. And it's just weird because in 99% of all these 110 cameras, the glass element is exposed and you can see it from the outside. So that's why I thought it had literally fallen out of the camera in shipment. This is the viewfinder, right? So this is what you're looking through right here. So the, the light passes through the viewfinder and the same with the lens. The, the, the light enters the lens, comes through. Let me open it so you can see the passageway, the direction of travel of the light, right? So here's the axis of the lens. It comes through and you can see there's the lens on the inside. So that would make, this is the, the light meter, right? So I'll open the, uh, I think I've showed you everything, right? The, the lens, the flash. So I'll open up a pack of Lomography. So this is Lomography Color Tiger. Let me get it in focus. Okay, this is a really wonderful film. And I'm going to roll the images in here of the one that I took previously. So it comes in this protective foil. And you just open it up, right? And Lomography is the only one, I think it's the only company making on tin film right now. But you can see here... It's 200 color negative tiger and this shows you your frame so the way you, you just you put the uh, you put the film in here it's just a cassette right and you just snap it right in boom good to go close the door oops close the door and now I'm not gonna do it now because I've already tested this camera I'm gonna move on to other camera but you just you just keep slide you slide it and push right slide it push the shutter and you want to index you just keep going until it reaches number one you'll see the number one in this counter and when you see numeral one it means you're on frame one and it's ready to go you're ready to start taking images so you just keep shooting right you just advance this and then it's two advance and then it would be three so forth and so on until you reach 24 <coughs> excuse me and then that number 24 you're done now I'm going to take this in two different ways. If you're going to send the film out to a lab, you just keep you just keep advancing until you've wound all the film. Let me take it back out so you can see which side is which. Okay. So you'll see here the the cartridge, the fresh, the let's see. Let me get it in focus. Okay. So the fresh side, the film. This is a fresh roll. All the film is contained in here on the right side. As you use the film, the film transfers over this way. The direction of travel is this way, and it starts to gather here on the take-up spool. So this one here, if you can see this, this is raised. This is raised here, and this is where the teeth engage the sprocket. This is what advances the film. This little protrusion here, there's a little sprocket, and the teeth inside the camera engage here and advance the film. So, And this is also the take-up spool. So the film, when it's a fresh pack, it's all contained here. And as you take the roll, it moves this way in this direction, and it gathers here on the take-up spool. So that's how it works. That's your 110 cartridge, okay? Now, so my point was, I forgot. If, when you, if you're sending it off to the lab, you advance it all. You keep advancing until you transfer all the film from this roll over onto this side. If not, if you're going to develop at home, right after the number 24, if you index, you're going to see a letter X. You're going to see some X's. You want to stop in the X. And leave it there but that's in another video I'm gonna cover that in another video but just remember if you're gonna develop at home advance one frame one frame past 24 is the letter X and stop there okay and again I'll get into this in more detail in a future video I just want to show you the camera and the film cartridge and now I'm gonna roll in the images I took I took some images with flash inside my apartment but they're kind of, you know, some private things in there. And forgive me for not showing those, but it's kind of a sensitive nature. But just, they came out beautifully. I was shocked at how, how nice these images came out indoors using flash. But I'll roll in now the images I took outside. And they're, they're nice too, but the images that were taken inside using flash were absolutely beautiful. So uh, again, it's a high-end camera. It's a fairly high-end camera. So I highly suggest you, you get a Kodak Extra Light 500. Okay, I'll roll the images in now. Thank you.